Hey guys, Kelly with Indie Film Factory here. Um, today's video uh, is actually my first video as part of a series on Just Make Movies. Now, the purpose of this video is to give you six simple basic steps to get your movie into production now. Now, what I'm referring to is I'm not talking about short films. I'm talking about feature length movies, movies that you can sell in the marketplace and, and hopefully start to build a business model for yourselves as a filmmaker. So, the other, the other component uh, about this, this uh, video today is that we're going to take the assumption that you are self-funded um, as well as uh, you, you have at least $30,000 to $40,000 to make a movie. Um, and I've been asked a lot about that. I, I kind of like that number. Uh, it sounds ridiculous to some people, especially people coming from the big industry of Hollywood or, or whatnot. Uh, they think, you know, how can you make a movie for $30,000? Well, I've done it and I've actually become profitable as a result of it. And I'm learning that the, the, the closer you can keep your budgets to zero, uh, the more effective you will be as an entrepreneur. Uh, because the marketplace really is very little difference between people that are making hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of movie budgets uh, versus those who are making the smaller, you know, $20,000, $30,000 budget. The buyers are all the same. And you're still competing for the same uh, attention in, in VOD and, uh, you know, click ad. Uh, type thing. So the reality is, is that you want to try to keep your budgets very, very low. So you know, the first thing I want to I want to talk about is your screenplay. You know, a lot of filmmakers are so eager to get into production that they they really miss the the the, be the most important aspect of the movie process, which is making sure you have a solid script. Now, what am I talking about? Solid script. There's a lot of variables that go into that that term, solid script. But the number one thing, more importantly is a script that not only has a good story that's unique, has a unique voice and all that stuff, and it's well-crafted, uh, which that takes time, and that takes a, 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 some, somewhat of a skill to, to master. But it's also taking the time to table read your movie, workshop your movie, to hear it in, in, with actors, with the voice of actors, because it allows you to kind of see the movie how it, how it would sound. And that's very, very important, I think, for, for any filmmaker who's, who's got a screenplay. Uh, the other component to the screenplay process is to, to find scripts and material that you can do in a relatively small amount of time. So what we're talking about here is we're talking about screenplays that require limited locations, sometimes less than five locations, um, six if you're really pushing it, uh, and, and a very small cast count. Um, you know, scenes that don't require tons and tons of extras, um, you're talking about maybe a handful of actors that are your primary cast members um, because at the end of the day you have to pay all of these people every single day to be there so you want to make sure that number is is low um, so that's going to be the first step so find good content and here's the thing um, if you don't know where to start uh, do a search for for movies successful movies and find movies that were successful that were kind of in that criteria There's a lot of great movies out there that were like one or two actors in the entire movie Independent movies maybe do some research and see if there's a way that you can kind of reverse engineer what they did and learn from it Because there's some value to that. So that's the first thing um, Once you get your script to a point where it is solid and what I meant by that is you know good story good technique and something that you can actually do for $30,000. What you want to do is you want to do a proper breakdown of your script. And so by breaking down a script, it's, it's a true art form. Um, it takes, uh, you know, in some cases, it takes a line producer or somebody who, who understands the, the, what things cost and how long things take to make. But on a very basic level as a filmmaker, you can break things down pretty simple. And the way you want to do this, I don't... There's programs out there. You got Movie Magic, and you've got a lot of other little helpful tools out there for filmmakers to break it down. I like doing things the old-fashioned way, and the reason why I do it this way is because it allows me to memorize the script. If a program does it for me, then I can't really visualize the production very well. So the first thing I like to do is I like to use a program. I use a program called Final Final Draft uh, to do my script, and so what I do is I create a scene report, and the scene report is usually lumped in the order of the screenplay. Um, you can choose it to not. I mean, you can lump them based by alphabetical order or uh, by uh, page count. Uh, but I usually like to do it in scene order, uh, script order. Uh, once I get this report, I actually go back in, I read the screenplay, and I contribute the attributes of that scene to each of those little little scene report areas. Um, and, and from there, I'm able to put in the cast that's going to be in these scenes, 
as well as the props, and maybe a slight little description about how, what's going on in these scenes. What this does is it allows me to see the entire movie as a, as a snapshot. So if I have to move things around, I can do it pretty fast, pretty efficiently, quite quickly. So I do it this way. Um, from there, I arrange everything based on location. Um, because ideally, you, when you go to a location, you, do, you don't want to set up your equipment and then have to leave that location and go somewhere else. So if you're filming interiors at a, say, a church or a school, you want to try to do everything that you can within that parameter of that location within the same time frame, whether it be all in one day or in the course of a week. So that's very, very important. Um, the other thing you can also do is arrange your your scenes based on the availability of the actors. So if, for example, uh, if you've got one actor who's in all of the scenes, great, no problem. But you may have two or three actors that are in this scene and they're not in this scene and they're not, in, you know, they're in the other one. So maybe what you can do is move them up. Um, you're obviously not going to be shooting in order of the script, but it allows you to be able to get through your cast without having them to come back multiple days or even, you know, at the worst case scenario, you can just get them all done in one, in one, you know, one sitting. So that's ideal. Um, and so that's the, the genesis of, you know, of doing a breakdown for a script. Now keep this in mind, you're probably only going to be able to make and shoot actually between four, maybe four to five pages a day. And that's really pushing it. If you do anything more than that, you kind of take the risk at being uh, bad, you know, really kind of rushing things. So I don't really think it's a good idea to try to shoot an aggressive amount of screenplays or screenplay pages in a day. I think comfortably between four to five pages, you know, sometimes even less than that. So that would be my recommendation for that. And then this allows you to see how long your, uh, your scenes are uh, because you can do a page count on these scene reports and it allows you to know where you draw the line for each day, how much you can actually shoot in that day. And based on that information, it will allow you to create a proper budget. It will allow you to see how many days you actually need to make your movie and then how many days you need each and every single actor to be involved in the course of the production. So those are very, very important things. So once you do your breakdown, then what? So once your script is bro broken down, um, you know, the, the first thing you could do is start looking at um, negotiating locations, you know, because you can't really make the movie without a location. Um, so I like to start there. It's actually the first thing I do before I even start looking at actors, because um, finding your location and getting that locked down can also help with the creative aspect of the script, because you may have to modify the screenplay to fit the location that you're filming at. So that's very, very important. So I, so I always like to look and find locations. I do a, a extensive location search. I try to figure that out. And then I also make that a part of my budget. Once I know what location I have, um, you know, depending on whether or not I can afford it or not, um, sometimes you have to do some clever kind of negotiations. For example, you may have to, to do some trade for some uh, commercial work. If you're, a, if you're a video production person or a filmmaker, you may have to do some kind of trade in kind. Um, or some type of joint advertising venture. Sometimes you just have to pay the price for it. But whatever it is, look and do a location search. You can use your local film commission. You can obviously reach out to people on Facebook, but find your location and take lots of reference photos because they're going to help uh, your director of photography or yourself, or however you're going, whoever's going to shoot your movie, is going to help all of those things. And hopefully you can find locations that are already set dressed, so you don't have to walk in and do a lot of you know, fuss with your set dressing because that also costs money and that, that brings your, your budget into a question. So try to make sure that you find a location that, that's kind of already set. Um, when I get done with a location, uh, then I'm ready to start doing my shot list. And my shot list is very important. And what I mean by shot list is I mean literally a bullet point aspect of each and every scene shot for shot. Now, I know in film school, they tell everybody to film master shots, and then you come in for your coverage. You're, you're basically shooting for coverage, and that's fine, and some filmmakers feel much better that way, and they leave it for the editor to kind of figure out what's going on. But when you're filming a movie um, that's $30,000, and you're doing a movie that quick, and you only have a certain amount of days to do it, you, chances are you probably only have between 13 and 15 days to film your movie, and that's a really tight window. So you have to be very, very uh, uh, conscious of what you can actually film in a day. And if you're out you know, trying to do the same scene over and over from different angles, even if you've got multiple cameras, 
you're going to realize how slow that's going to make your production. So what I really like to do is take the time to plan out everything that I physically need for that day. So you may not need to get the whole take of the actor saying the line on a close-up. You may only need certain parts of the line in a close-up. Now I know that sounds, that flies in the face of convention. And some film students and, and teachers will probably yell at me for this. But trust me, I've made, I've made six films. And out of all of those films, the movies that were the most successful in terms of making their day was based on the shot list theory, which you only shoot what you need. And I was told this by a, a legendary filmmaker uh, who, who said, you know, just shoot what you need. Don't waste your time on coverage. It's a waste. So do your shot list. Take the time to know how to put the visual story together before you do it. It's, it's kind of like it almost becomes the edit plan at that point. So I, I think that's very, very important. Um, the other aspect I want to talk about is start your casting process after that. It's time to start your casting process. Once you get your script broke down, your location's in the can, and your shot list kind of in order, now it's time to start maybe looking at, at, at looking at actors. Now, there's a couple ways you can go about this. You can do uh, run ads in the, in the local trades and do casting notices and things like that. Um, I like to go to film festivals and screenings locally and, and watch people on screen. Because it's, for me, it's a relaxed environment. I don't have to be on. I don't have to be worried about uh, setting up auditions or meetings. But once I get a chance to see who, who's out there, then I can always call them in privately to read for me um, and, and see if they're the right fit for the particular uh, character that I'm looking for them to play. Um, but it, it, it minimizes that, that, that hassle of having to do auditions and things like that. Uh, but if you are going to do auditions, I always recommend never do auditions from your house. Find a professional environment. You can always rent the Indie Film Factory if you're here in Las Vegas, my shameless plug. Uh, or you can, you can reach out to the library. Libraries also offer uh, conference and meeting spaces that you can do something. But make sure it's a public place. Make sure it's a safe environment for not only yourself, but the actors and the candidates that are involved. And if you are posting casting notices, make sure that you put as much information about what they're applying for as possible. So if you've got scenes where people need to be slightly, you know, nude or something like that. You need to make sure you indicate that on there because the last thing you want to do is go through the process of looking for people and then finding out that they're uncomfortable with something. And then you have to either find a new person or change your plan. So be very upfront with that. And that also builds integrity and trust. And that's very, very important with your actors. Um, the other part of once you get your actors, try to do table reads, try to do workshops, try to do as many things as you possibly can to meet with the talent and get to know them. It's not just about working out the kinks of the performance, but it's also to check how you guys work together. Because I believe that the best, I'll use a sports analogy, the best teams in let's say football and, and pro American football are teams that the coach and the quarterback almost have this kind of subconscious um, telepathy that happens with each other, whether they kind of read each other's minds. There's a chemistry there that's very, very important. And I think if you can build that with your actors and your, your cast as a director, as a filmmaker, as a producer, you're going to have a much easier experience on set because you're going to be able to get the information across a little bit easier. You're going to learn how to communicate with people. Another great thing about having that process kind of already behind you is that you, you allow yourself the ability to see who's going to be a team player because at the end of the day, you're going to be stuck with these people probably for several months, if not years. Um, so you want to make sure that the people that you're associating yourself with are people that you click with, people that you get along with, and ultimately can build, you know, hopefully long-term relationships. Um, and then now, you know, we're kind of at the bottom of the list uh, of things to do. But at this point in the game, once you get these, these first five basic elements together, you know, at this point, it's really time to, to start making your movie. And what do you need to start making your movie? Well, after, from there, you got to do the following things. You got to lock down your locations, make sure they're, they're, they're in. You also got to make sure you have your right insurances. So it's more of like administrative type work at this point. But of course, scheduling is a big part of it, making sure you can get everybody's schedules on sync. All of those things are important at this stage, but you're within a stone's throw of, of getting your movie into production at this point. You know, so I think a lot of people, when they think of the entire movie process, it's overwhelming. It gets quite overwhelming. And I, I look, I've made six feature films. I'm getting ready to make another one. And I got to tell you, at the beginning of the process, I go, whew, there's a lot of steps that have to happen before you get to sit in the chair on set and call action. 
And there's certainly a lot of steps that happen before you get to see your movie on TV or in the theaters or whatnot. So uh, that's what I have. That's my two cents uh, or my, my, my six bullet points for how to get your movie into production now. I hope you find it helpful. But I hope more importantly, it creates movement. I hope you're able to get moving because there is nothing more tragic than always bumping into people that are still trying to get their movie going. So I always want to encourage people just to make their movie. That's all I've got for you today. I hope you have a great rest of your week and we'll talk to you soon.